Hi everyone, welcome back to another Start Border video. In this video, we're gonna be speaking about what whitewater safety equipment you should be taking with you when you go paddling. Whitewater stand-up paddleboarding is an amazing side to our sport. Many of you are getting into it now and are really enjoying the adrenaline rush it gives you, the technicality of paddling down a river and also going out on the river with friends as well. But it definitely doesn't come without any risks. There is a lot of things you need to be aware of when you are whitewater paddling. You've got moving water, moving over rocks generally, eddies, stoppers, play waves, lots of things that are there to catch you out. But with the correct safety equipment and knowing how to use it, you can really make sure you're safe on the water. I've experienced whitewater paddleboarding a few times and it's a lot of fun, but I'm definitely not an expert. That's why we've called on Beth Kirby, our SUP River paddling expert, to share some of her knowledge of whitewater safety gear that is needed, which I'm gonna to present to you. Beth is a super passionate and high level whitewater paddler. She's done lots of videos with us already on SUP border. So if you're looking to understand more about this great, exciting discipline, definitely check out more of Beth's videos. And she also does SUP coaching as well. It's definitely not the SUP discipline that you're just gonna need all the gear to be safe on the water. You're gonna to have to understand how to use that gear. So it is a must to have some whitewater coaching before you head out on the river. The gear we're all gonna use and highlight in this video is all gonna be from Palm. We've been paddling with Palm equipment in sort of all round supping and touring supping for many years, but they actually started back in 1979, very much making safety equipment for paddlers so they could get on the rivers, enjoy them and stay safe on the water. So they have a lot of experience about this sort of stuff. And definitely if you're looking at getting into white water, we can guarantee that any of this gear from Palm is gonna be well made and it's gonna do the job it needs to do. So let's look at some of the safety equipment you should definitely be considering if you're gonna get into white water paddling. Clothing and what to wear on your body, even if you're the best pro out there, you're still gonna be falling in. That's the thing about white water paddling, everybody is gonna be getting wet at some point. In those colder climates, it's definitely well worth investing in a good quality, decent dry suit. It's gonna keep you so much more comfortable when you're in and out of the water. It doesn't restrict your movement at all, and it's just gonna keep you way, way warmer. You could opt for a thicker winter wetsuit as well, but if you're definitely, if you're planning a longer session, I would advise going for a waterproof, windproof CAG on top of that wetsuit as well, just to give you a bit more warmth. In the summer or warmer months, you could still opt for a dry suit or you could opt for a thinner wetsuit. And on those really warm river paddling days, if you're lucky enough to experience some of those, you could even opt for some near flex pants or bottoms. It's always well worth having something on your legs because remember, there's gonna be quite a few obstacles in the water you may hit. When it comes to your footwear, a lot of you overlook this. Yes, you can opt for a good quality pair of wetsuit boots, some with a good thick sole is a must. But really, if you're getting into white water paddling, you're better off looking for more of a shoe to wear when you're paddling because you're gonna be scrambling over a lot of rocks, you're gonna be doing a lot of portaging, getting up the river banks, walking around, a good pair of shoes with a good amount of support and a good sole to them really is a good move, something like the gradient boot. Moving up to the top of your body now, talking about helmets. This is definitely an absolute must when it comes to white water paddling, even on the smaller, shallower rivers. Most times you're gonna be paddling over rocks. And if you fall in the water and you hit your head on one of those rocks, you don't need to imagine what's gonna happen. So definitely a good quality helmet. The Palm Shock helmet is a really quite snazzy looking helmet with a nice comfortable padding and it's easily adjustable. You can opt to have it with ears, without ears. Obviously if you're paddling in colder climates, a helmet really keeps you a lot warmer as well. Another thing that's an absolute must is a buoyancy aid or PFD, personal flotation device. Really you wanna be looking towards more of a white water specific buoyancy aid. The Palm FXR and the Riff are two really nice PFDs that are specifically designed for white water paddling. You'll find the buckle systems, the webbing straps, or even the FXR with its quick release system. It's all quite heavy duty. It's designed to really make sure it works when it needs to for that person. It's really important that the PFD you choose does fit very well. It's got to obviously not restrict your movement, but at the same time, it can't ride up at all because people might be pulling you out of the water by your shoulder straps. So definitely worth trying them on in the shops, doing your buoyancy aid up at the bottom and working your way up and seeing if you can actually pull yourself or seeing if somebody else can pull your buoyancy aid 
over your head. You definitely do not want to be seeing your buoyancy aid come up over your ears because that really isn't gonna work well in the river. Also, it's a good idea to look at some with front pockets because we will be speaking about some other accessories which you can put in them in a minute. Another item which sort of goes hand in hand with the buoyancy aid or PFD is your leash and quick release. Now this is a very important and hot topic at the moment. If you're going to wear a leash, you have to have a leash with a good quick release system on it. You can either opt for a quick release system that's built in to a PFD like on this FXR, or you can choose to wear a quick release belt that you put on over your buoyancy aid. But this belt has got to work efficiently, easily, and it's got to be accessible for you as well. So you can access that quick release buckle, which will get rid of your whole leash. We definitely would recommend wherever you are in the world, find out what your local governing body or paddle association is recommending when it comes to whitewater paddling and to wear or not to wear a leash. As I said, it's a very hot topic at the moment, but please make sure if you wear a leash, you have a good quick release system on it and you know how to use it. A piece of equipment that if you're newer to paddling, you might not have heard of is a throw line. A throw line is a really good, useful piece of equipment that if you're paddling with other people, you can throw this out across the water and help somebody get in across the river. It's definitely worth having some good training to understand how to use this best, but a throw line is something you can have easily on your buoyancy aid and you can unclip it and you can really help somebody in a case of emergency. They come in lots of different sizes and lengths, depending on how far you're gonna to need to throw it, maybe the size of the river. But again, it's really worth having some proper training to use this. If you are gonna be paddling with a throw line or a leash, an absolute must is a good sharp knife that's easily accessible on you. Something you can grab to cut a leash or a throw line that's become entangled. This type of knife from Palm is actually a really good example because you can have it in your pocket and obviously you're not going to damage yourself having it on you, but it's very quick and easy to undo it without even looking at the knife, which is what you're going to need to do if you can need to help somebody out of the situation. Another thing that's well worth having in your front pocket is a whistle. Now, a lot of people overlook this very simple bit of equipment, but a lot of the times you might become detached from your board or detached from your paddling buddies further down the river. Maybe you can't see them because the river is very winding. A whistle is easily going to get their attention and to alert somebody that maybe you're in trouble. Very simple and easy thing to have in your front pocket. Now with all of this equipment, it's really important. Again, you know how to use it. It fits you well. It's in good condition. You look after it. Palm have been making paddle and safety equipment for a long time. So everything's been designed to make sure it works perfectly when it needs to work to help somebody out of a certain situation. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Definitely check out some of the other videos we've done with Palm, whether it's looking at the dry suits, the PFDs, the jackets, the quick release leashes, and also definitely check out some more of the videos from Beth Kirby where she's been speaking more about the basic stuff of white water and what you should be looking out for when you're getting into it. But again, always get a lesson and get a good understanding of how to paddle on white water before you head out onto the river. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name's Ruben and I'll see you on another Supboarder video soon.